In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct t-tests in JASP. I'm using a um, data set called Fictional Data Scale Data Version 2. You will see it in the video at the um, bottom in the notes. This is a little bit different than a version I've used in some of my other videos that is just called fictional scale data. Um, I've just made a few alterations and changed a few things in this so that we don't have to spend time cleaning up some data. There are things that basically I showed how to do in prior videos. So we're going to start with this video and we are going to just simply use this t-test drop down. I want to remind you briefly that JASP is often updated so if your JASP is more recent than mine, uh, mine is recent as of the time of making this video, but if yours is more recent than that you may find some little things look a little bit different on yours. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with using this t-test drop down. When you see that you'll see we have a variety of options classical versus Bayesian um, t-tests. In this video, we're only going to talk about the classical t-tests, not the Bayesian ones. Those are a little bit more advanced. Let's go ahead and click on independent samples t-test to start with. So independent samples t-test occurs when you are comparing two groups, and these two groups are not paired up in any way. For example, maybe I have a group of men and a group of women that I want to compare. They are not spouses, they're not siblings, um, they're not paired up in, in any way like that. So we're just going to compare one group to another. When that's the case, we will have their, um, our data set typically set up so that we have a variable that is the grouping variable that is labeled, you know, one for males, two for females, or zero, one, or in some other similar way so that we have the two groups. Now it's important to know that you will need to make sure if you're comparing two groups here that your grouping variable only has two groups. So if you have three or more groups and you just wanted to compare two of the groups and ignore the third and, and others, then you're going to make, need to make a new variable that does that. And I do have a, ver um, a video that shows you how to make new variables if you need to do that. But to start off with, um, using this fictional data set, what we're going to use as our dependent variable is sum scale. It's very at the very bottom. It's just the total of items 1 through 20 here. It's just a fictional set of 20 items measured, um, on some kind of a scale. And I'm going to pop that over there to dependent variables. Okay. And then I'm going to use a grouping variable. And in this case, I'm going to pick gender because that's just two categories, okay? So I can use that in particular in this particular case. And you'll see on the bottom of the of the window here the, the type of variables it can be for it to use it here. So if for some reason your grouping variable, even though it's just two groups, you have a just one, two or zero one or something like that, um, for some reason you've labeled it a scale, then you need to change that to be either nominal or ordinal. And you can do that over in the data section. Just over here, you click on these little drop downs and, and change it to the type that you want. Okay, so it needs to be of the correct type. Similarly, if you're using something as a dependent variable that it has labeled as um, ordinal or in some other, some other way, you will need to change that to be scale for it to work here. So I'm going to pop gender over. Now what you're going to see is immediately you have results over here on the right. Um, JASP works in a live format. If I were to change a variable, you know, put this back and put another variable over, if I had another with only two groups, it would immediately change my results over here. So it's giving me my results. It's assuming by default a two-sided t-test and you can see the p-value here. And generally, this is just the table that you want. That's all the information you're going to need to copy and paste and put into you know, some kind of a, of a report or paper or, or whatever you're doing here. So the results are just popped over there quite quickly and easy to find. Now, let's go through some of the various options because those are really important to understand. OK, we have a student t-test here. Um, that's the, the most commonly used. I'll come back to these options in a minute. This is your alternate hypothesis if you have a one-sided hypothesis, meaning you go into it believing that group one might be higher than group two. That's what you're trying to find out. Then you could click here, 
and and then that essentially will um, cut your p-value in half, assuming that that um, it's the you have chosen the direction that's reflected by the data and so forth. So you can choose that over here. Um, on this particular um, column, you see that we have the option to add in a confidence interval. Confidence intervals are highly used, very respected. You will find, of course, they're highly correlated with a p-value. So if my p-value shows lack of statistical significance, at a 0.05 cutoff or alpha of 0.05, then a 95% cutoff, 0.05 alpha goes with a 95% um, confidence interval, will have a confidence interval that goes on both sides of zero, meaning we don't really know which whether it's whether the true difference between these groups is less than zero, zero, or greater than zero. We don't we don't really know. So you can add that option in there. You can add, also add in effect size. And, you know, the purpose of this particular video isn't to teach you theory about it, but I'll just comment that Cohen's D is a very commonly used effect size. It's a way of, um, you know, comparing um, things that would have been apples to oranges to each other, making them apples to apples when you're doing various tests, comparing their size to each other to see how, how big and in, in um, scaled terms the actual differences between the two groups. And it's not really meaningful to interpret when we don't have statistical significance anyway. Okay, so I have that. I can also get, while I'm doing it, descriptive statistics, which you always want. Typically, I'll have my students do the descriptive, find descriptive statistics before they even do the t-test for each group and look at plots. But the way that it's set up in JASP, you can do it all as part of this same um, interface here so you can do it all at once. So that is something that you always want to do is, is include the descriptive statistics. You can see here the means for the two groups. Group 2 in this case is female, group 1 is male. Group 2 does have a slightly higher mean, although you know we found lack of statistical significance. So, so we'll go ahead and show that for you. It can also show you some plots. Um, descriptive plots, for example, let me show you what that looks like. That's going to be this kind of a plot, which basically shows you, you know, this is my y-axis, the, the scale, my mean for group one versus my mean for group two, and then it has confidence intervals around those two means. That's what the beginning and end of those bars are. So you see these confidence interval around, you know, you know, I'm 95% confident that the mean for males is in this range, well, for females in this range, those overlap so much. We don't really believe there's a difference between the groups based on that. A um, variety of other kinds of plots you can show here. For example, bar plots. I don't think that those are, are my favorite here. A variety of other uh, types that you can look at. Okay, and you have an, some options here in terms of how to, you know, to ex exclude your cases. Um, now, <clears throat> the assumption checks are the, are the next thing that we might want to look at here. The assumptions um, are important um, due to the central limit theorem, which is something you learn about in intro stats. Um, we only care, care about normality of the original data if our sample size is small. In this case, our sample sizes are large enough that we don't need to worry about whether the original data, meaning the actual scores themselves, are normally distributed. But we will want to always look at equality of variances. And the reason we want to look at that is we want to look to see whether the variance or how much the scores vary within the male and female groups are fairly equal. The reason we want to look at those is because if they are not fairly equal, then we want to make an adjustment to our t-test. So we want to go ahead and look at uh, that. Um, there's these two options for looking at um, equality of variances, and I'm not going to go into theory. However, if you want more information, you can click on this blue eye here and it will tell you some more things. So let's go back up. The assumption checks are actually up a little bit higher and you can see <clears throat> what we're finding here is a p-value of 0.16. Non-statistically significant, that is what we want. We want no evidence that the two groups are different from, I mean, the two variances are different from each other. That means that the t-test we did up here satisfied assumptions. So here we're looking for statistical significance showing there's a difference in the two groups. Down here we're looking for 
if there was statistical significance, say is that the variance between the two groups is not sufficiently equal. Therefore, this test we did up here was problematic and we need to do a revision to it. So that's what we find here. And in this case, it's not problematic. Um, if it were, then we can come up here and we would check on doing this Welch's test. You can click on the Welch's test and um, the Welch's test will just pop up underneath the other. I can unclick the students and that one goes away or I can, I can look at them both. St students t-test is just the basic one. And, and you'll see that we get basically the same results either way, regardless. You also have the non-parametric option here. I'm not going to go into par non-parametrics in depth in this video, but that would happen if, let's say, for example, you had small enough samples that you needed to worry about normality, but there was not normality of the original scores. And that will typically happen under, maybe if you have under um, 30 or 40 in your groups, then you need to worry about that. But I refer you to reading about non-parametrics to understand a little bit more about that. Again, this is just a video on how to rather than a theory video. So that's our independent samples t-test. I'm going to show you how briefly how we might do the other kinds of t-tests in this video as well. Right here you can see a paired samples t-test as an option. I pop that one up. And a paired samples t-test might happen when you have, um, maybe you're trying to compare a pre-test score to a post-test score. So you have two observations for this for each person. Or you have people that pair up, maybe their husband, wife pairs, or twins. Um, one of the most common situations would be a pretest and post-test score. Now, I don't have a pretest and post-test score in this particular data set. I'm just going to say, for example, let's suppose we wanted to compare how they responded on um, the first item to how they responded on the second item. And you can see it gives you this hits them in these kind of pairs. I'm going to compare how do they re respond to this item versus how do they compare to the other. I'm essentially doing a t-test to see whether the means of these two are different. Technically, I'm looking to see whether the difference in the means of these two is zero, okay? Or <clears throat> the mean of the differences, to be even more precise. If I were to find scale two score minus scale one for every person, I'm looking to see whether the mean of of, of those differences is zero. So I'm going to just um, show you that it pops up over here on the right. Similarly, again, we have lack, we don't have statistical significance. And I have a variety of options that are quite similar. Over here I have um, my one tail test option. Um, over here, um, the, the looking at the var difference in variance in the two groups is not something we worry about because what we're really looking is just one set of data in this particular case. And there's, we're looking to see um, whether, you know, if we were to make a new variable that was the differences in these scores, whether the mean of that is zero. So there's, that's not applicable. However, if you do have a very small sample size and, and the, those differences are not normally distributed, you might need to go to a non-parametric, and that's what this here. I'm not going to go into that in detail. Just want to show you how to do this. Um, location parameter, again, that's our confidence interval. If we pop on that, you'll see over here at the right, the confidence interval is added. Um, again, we can do an effect size over here, which um, it doesn't say there, but is, but is another Cohen's D. Okay, we can do descriptive statistics, which basically are going to be, let's come back over here so you can see, let me make that visible. Descriptive statistics will be the means for the two groups. And again, the statistical test technically is not finding whether this, the difference in these means is zero. What it's technically doing is finding the difference between these values for every single person and then seeing if the mean of all those differences is zero. It's just a fine point of difference, conceptually quite similar. Okay, and then we have similar kinds of plots here, similar option here. Again, we can do the normality check if we wish to. Um, we don't need to because our sample size is large enough. However, you will see it pop over on the right when you do it. And this one's statistically significant, meaning those differences are not normally distributed. 
It does not concern me because my sample size is, is quite large. I've got 117 over here. So because it's quite large, that's not going to be problematic. So that's our second kind of t-test. The third kind is rarely used, the one sample t-test. In that case, we do that if we're just testing to see whether some value is um, some variable mean, the mean of some variable is equal to some pre-existing value, let's say um, some scale, the sum of the scales. Let's suppose that um, in the past, let's see, um, First, let me look at what the actual actual mean is, because otherwise I'm not going to be in the ballpark. You know, the descriptives show the mean is actually 59 here for that sum scale by clicking on descriptives here. It's similar kinds of options. If I, let's say that in the past, um, the mean has been um, something like 65, okay? That was true in the past, and I want to see whether we have statistical significance that's different from that value. I'm going to put... 65 in here for my tested value and it's going to do a, a t-test based on that statistically significant which suggests that um, we have the this mean um, is significantly different than the 65 we have evidence that that really for this group that i sampled from the mean is not still at 65 it is shifted okay and um, so that, that's what you can do with this. And again, this is not very commonly done. But we have the similar kinds of options here. Okay. Down here, we have assumption test. And again, this is really only problematic when your um, sample size is fairly large, small. Okay. Then we would worry about that. In that case, this is going to be the, the non-parametric alternative. I'm not teaching near parametrics in this video. So that might be something I teach another time. Um, or a z-test, um, instead of a t-test, a z-test can be done if you know the true standard deviation or variance of the group. We don't in this particular case. However, with large sample sizes, um, it's going to be essentially equivalent um, anyway. So that's our three kinds of, of t-tests. You see that I can keep them all here. The information is saved for all of them over the right. I can save just pieces or all of this, um, this information. I can pull out just one table to save or I can save, you know, by clicking on here. I can export the entire result file or copy and paste the entire result file or I can just do pieces of it.